A lot of real estate investors think that you cannot find deals on the MLS when in fact you can. not Like I find deals on the MLS myself, a lot of my friends do. And in today's video, I kind of want to break down how I find deals on the MLS, like what kind of searches I use, how I handle the MLS, like how the interactions go, like what do I even do? Like how do you do it? That's what I'm gonna go over in this video. And if you are new to this channel in general, my name is Justin Yurong and I've helped hundreds of people in real estate. So first thing I wanna start with is I guess my auto prospecting searches. For the MLS, um, the first houses that I look at or my team looks at now for the MLS are the homes that have been sent every single day for auto prospecting. So if you don't know what that is, like on the MLS, you can set searches or you can have a realtor set searches for you um, for particular homes that you want to see. Now, there's two main searches that I use on the MLS and I'm literally gonna give away my secrets, um, but it allows me to see homes that are most likely to be good deals. Um, so the first thing I do, is I set keywords on the MLS for the searches. So every single day I wanna find homes that are listed for sale that have specific keywords. Some of these keywords might be cash, might be um, fixer upper, might be rehab, might be TLC, which means tender loving care, meaning the home needs work, um, might be investor, uh, so I need like those kinds of keywords. I think I, I gave like a, those are decent amount of keywords, but I look for those particular keywords so that if you enter those keywords on the search, that every time a house is listed that has those keywords, it's gonna show to you. Now there's a certain setting on the MLS that you actually have to change um, to make sure all the keywords are shown. I think it's like changing it from and to or, meaning if you type in keywords, TLC, fixer upper, cash, investor, if you type in all those keywords, you wanna make sure that it says um, or. So if you're saying, I wanna find houses that show the words TLC or investor or cash or fixer upper, because if you have it as and, like that would mean one listing would have to have all your keywords in order to be for it to be sent to you, which means you're probably not gonna be sent a lot of property. So that's the first search I do. Now the second search I do for auto prospecting, it actually has to do with price per square foot. And it's a little bit tricky. Uh, I, I think most MLSs can handle this kind of keyword, this kind of search. But basically for every single zip code in the city that I'm targeting, so from my city is Fresno, California, I essentially will take the, like let's start with one zip code. So I would take one zip code I would filter the list or sort the list of um, of homes for sale by price per square foot. And then I'd sort it by lowest price per square foot to highest price per square foot. So if that's for a particular zip code, all the houses for sale in a particular zip code sorted by price per square foot, lowest to highest. From there, I would look at the fifth lowest price per square foot home. I would set whatever the price per square foot of that was, and I would set that as the maximum amount price per square foot for that zip code. And you can literally, so what it's doing, it's helping me set the search for all the homes in this particular zip code that are under this price per square foot. Now what it's telling me, every time a home pops up under that price per square foot in that zip code, I am going to get an email notification for that. And typically, if it's a low price per square foot home, it's probably a fixer upper, or it's probably a home that's listed a lot lower than the others because the price per square foot's lower. So what it's allowing me to do is see the potential homes for sale that are good deals, or potentially good deals right away before everyone else. And I can do this because of that search, like, and you just have to do that for every single zip code. And that's actually like been pretty nice. But I will say that for the MLS, MLS is all about volume. Where, I mean, everything's about volume. You gotta do a lot of offers and offer on a lot of homes. So when I run out of all the homes on the auto prospecting searches that I just described, the keyword and the price per square foot ones, like when I go through the emails every single day and they're all gone, the next thing I do is I just offer on everything from lowest price to highest price. So, I mean, that stuff doesn't really matter if you're doing volume anyways, but if you don't have the time and like maybe you work a full-time job and you only got an hour or two a day to analyze deals and make offers, then like, dude, this is, this is amazing. These searches can save you a lot of time and help you look at the right properties fast. But yeah, what I do is I try to literally make 20 offers a day on the MLS at least. Um, so if you're not doing that, it's gonna take some time to get a deal. And I know this because when I was first getting started in real estate, I'd make one offer a day and it took some time to get a deal, like a long time, but I got the deal. My first deal, 
Uh, so nowadays, I just try to offer 20 offers a day on the MLS, um, first from the auto prospecting services, and then from just lowest price to highest price. Um, how I offer though, a lot of people are kind of confused when I say offer, because whenever you think of offer, you might think of like actually writing a full offer and then sending it to the agent um, or the seller. That's not what I'm talking about. When I say I make 20 offers a day, I'm talking about just like some type of offer anywhere. It could be on the phone, it could be a text, which is how I typically make most offers is by text until like they're serious. So first off, usually what I do, let's say I analyze a deal. I'm like, okay, like if I wanna make money on this, I gotta pay $100,000. So maybe $100,000 is my offer. Um, I would just text the agent like, hey, would your seller entertain an offer of $100,000? Uh, that's literally all I'd ask in a text. And most of the time the answer is no. Like I was like, okay, cool. So, so you offer on text. If they say no, won't consider, say cool, I'll check up in a month or so, whatever it is. And then I just follow up every single month until it gets sold to them, another person, or it gets sold to me. And um, often on the MLS, you will get deals by being the backup offer anyways. Like most of my MLS deals comes from me being the backup, meaning the listing agent or the seller, they accept a different offer. They accept an offer from someone else. And then I see that the offer is pending or that home is pending or already in escrow. I'll call the agent or text them. I'm like, hey, like I noticed it's already in escrow. If anything ever changes, the buyer backs out, doesn't stay true to their word, whatever it is, if, if something goes wrong, I'm still here, my offer still stands. And what that does is it gives the agent or that seller some like, some comfort of like, okay, like if we have this guy back out, like we still have a backup, this guy's still here, he's persistent, he checks up with me every single month, like he must be a legit buyer. That's what hopefully goes through their minds as I say that, and that's how I get the deals. So as you're making these offers every single day, and hopefully it's like 20 a day, 10 a day, like a lot of offers every single day, you have to be sure to actually follow up every single month at least with these these uh, realtors. Because if you don't do the follow-up, you're probably not gonna get the deals. Um, most realtors, if you don't follow up, they're gonna forget about you. So if you make an offer of a home and you reach out to an agent, hey, I'm gonna offer $100,000 for this. They say no. If you never follow up again, they will forget about you. They're gonna forget that you ever made an offer um, so it's up to you to do the follow up. And I promise you, if you just kind of stick to this game plan, like it really works for the MLS. Another thing is um, you want to be aware of when you're wasting your time on a particular home. So even though you can offer on everything and I suggest for you to offer on everything, um, in fact, that was one of my biggest mistakes before, I would always offer on th homes that I thought had the better chance of getting accepted. But what I realized is that I should have just been offering on everything because there's a lot of houses out there that you have no idea if they're gonna accept your offer. So offer on everything, but you have to realize when you might be wasting your time. Meaning if you come across homes that are like, they look like they've been recently renovated from another house flipper, another investor, like you're probably gonna be wasting your time if you need to buy a home at a massive discount. You know, they're, they're, tr they're trying to get top dollar. They just put all this money into a home, they renovated it. Um, so keep in mind, like as you're scrolling through the MLS to try to find deals to offer on, if a home looks like it was completely renovated and maybe you text the agent or something like, hey, what would your seller entertain? They tell you he's a flipper or something. Like you're probably not gonna get that deal. So know when you have to cut, cut off a home to follow up on, because it's just not worth your time. Because again, you wanna be spending your time to the best of your ability where you're gonna actually maximize your money. Um, and if you're, all your time is being spent on all these recently renovated homes from house flippers, you're not gonna get any deals. Like your time should be spent on the homes that probably would be sold to you, you know? So that's how I handle the MLS. It actually is a lot easier than you might think. Well, I'm lied. It's a lot simpler than you might think. but it's hard because it takes a lot of effort and a lot of volume and a lot of work. So hopefully that helped. And if you just want help to grow your real estate investing business in general, I want you to go to the link in the description below for a free strategy session. But otherwise, peace.